I don't really know, but I'm trying to make. Okay, so this is the I assume we're gonna have some sort of extending uh, arm with the drawer side, so mm-hmm. working out some way to put the pulleys and. Yeah. And then servos are actually raised. Uh huh. This is a servo. Yeah. So you can like pull these on like this side with the rope oh, cool. over the pulleys so that oh. you can like pull it off. Yes. That is good so, yeah. because so, like we haven't really seemed to work with it, but a lot of the ideas going around right now are have the arm to get blocks and lift them up, and then a completely separate arm to lift up the robot. But I think that it would be better if we could have some strong enough pulley system to get it so it would go up and then pull back down. And that yeah. way we wouldn't have as many extensions, we wouldn't need as many motors, it would just be... Yeah, so I'm just going to see what it goes. Excellent. I just want to... Okay. Prevent you guys from wasting money and burning things out. Another school that shall remain nameless. Plugged in their servo motors backwards. If you see, there's YRB that stands for yellow, red, black, which corresponds to the, the wire in here, yellow, red, black. You can plug it in backwards. If you do that with black, red, yellow, you can fry this thing out and it's fifty dollars or something like that. So don't do that. Okay. Also, this is the input and this is the output. If you plug them in backwards, you can fry this and waste fifty dollars. So don't do that. Input is over the. It's left to right input output. It's looking at the text. Input output. Okay. So we had one school that plugged their motors in backwards, plugged their controllers in backwards, and then programmed it like a DC motor controller instead of a servo controller. So they were over three, and they fried it quickly. And needless to say, they're not happy. Did they learn from their mistake? Yes, I mean. <laughs> okay, so so a robot consists. From your perspective of the micro- microprocessor, possibly some sensors, and then the way these are controlled from this is you plug it into one of the sensor ports, usually sensor port one, and that goes off into the input of one of these, like there. That would be the input, and then you can daisy chain these so I could cut the output into a second one. Okay. So I could have two, three, or up to four off each sensor port. Awesome. Okay. So the way first thing we have to do in Robot C is say how have we wired our our robot. Mm-hmm. So let's let's go do it for this one. So we've on sensor port one, we've hooked up one DC motor controller, mm-hmm. and let's just say for now it looks like motor one is going over to here and is blue left or right. We just named them blue and white. Okay. So we them. <laughs> okay, great. So number one is connected to the blue motor, okay. and number two is connected to the white motor. So okay? when you rename. Exactly. So we're gonna. So let's. But let's you might want to call that teal because there's it's other blue. Yeah, that's mine. Oh, what is it? It is a clutch. So can that I, is awesome. Let me show you. Yeah. How this works. So normally, if you have a motor, and you you have a motor hub and you put a gear on it, and the gear is connected to an arm or something and it stops, like the arm runs into the ground and and, and you're trying to make it go and the arm can't go, in about one second this will start smoking. And in, it, in that second, it will start losing its power. And if you run that for two, three, or four, or five, or six, six seconds, the motor will become completely useless, and you will have burned up $20. So it's good to not do that. Um, so what this is, on this the motor axle, there are actually two motor hubs. There's one, which is the set screw is connected to the motor, ac- hub, the motor axle. So when the motor goes, that motor hub will spin. Yeah. But on the second one, it's free spinning. It's not tied down. It's not set screwed down to the to the motor hub. And so it's free spinning. And on, over that is a little piece of vinyl tubing. You can see it's clear tubing. Yeah. And the tubing is zip tied on there. So the idea is normally when the motor is going, the tubing is tight enough that it will cause the second one to spin with the first one, and it will cause the gear to spin. Mm-hmm. But if this gear stops and the motor is going, what happens is the friction of the vinyl tubing is not sufficient enough to hold it. So the motor will still spin and it won't fry itself out oh. while this is stuck. And then as soon as you let go, it'll it'll grip again. And okay. it's just like a clutch in a car or a clutch so where in anything do we else. Get them? This is vinyl tubing and zip ties. Vinyl tubing you get at Lowe's. This piece is about 30 cents. It's about $1.77 per foot. No, but the Okay, so now what is this? Part. This is a 3D printed part. Yeah, I got that much. And the only purpose of this part is if this stops and the motor's going, then this can slide this way because it's 
the tubing is not, there's no friction between the tubing and that hub. So this can, the whole thing can slide out and fall on the ground or whatever. So the only pr point of this part is to hold this from sliding that way. Okay, so what's the metal part that we're connected to? So this is just another, it's an axle hub basically, this. So it's so geared to it, axle hub. But, but if, if, let me just finish my one thought. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Right. So you don't need any of this 3D printed stuff. If, say this is on a channel, let's say you mount something for you mount your motor hub like this, and you have a little piece of metal coming off of this that does that. That just prevents the gear from sliding that way. Then you don't need any of this 3D okay. printed gun. All you need is tubing and some way of preventing it from sliding that way. It's completely optional, but nonetheless, it will save $20 motors if you. And the other team sounds like they smoked two of their motors at their last session because they okay. tried to make their arm go and it was too heavy and it basically smoked the motors. So, okay. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So. How would it then oh, sorry, it's not that, it's one of uh, these. Well, no, it's not We actually just got some new ones in our bags. Where are your motor hubs? Yeah. <laughs> See? Because we had yeah. trouble finding them, so. Like this. This is an axle hub, uh -huh. and this is a motor hub. And I don't know if you remember, the only difference is if you look, the motor the diameter of the space for the motor hub is bigger because the motor axle is thicker. Okay. Basically, the axle, like this, this goes through an axle hub. Mm -hmm. And the, the axle that comes out of the motor is thicker. So that's this is just thick enough to take the motor axle. 